there is a concept that hardware design drives software. Your phone has a touch screen, therefore all of the phone interfaces are designed specifically around that touch screen. In the 80s, the hardware divide between computers and video game consoles was really significant. Computers didn't have a lot of thought put into their game interfaces, because they were serious machines for serious adults. On the other hand, as multi-purpose machines that had to be used for business applications, they had tons of memory in them. Over on consoles, you had good controllers with lots of button inputs, but the programs were all being read off of ROM cartridges, so how much RAM did you really need? The reason I'm mentioning this is that it resulted in two very different design philosophies. Games designed around the computer tended to be slower, more deliberate, but also take advantage of the fact that the computer could keep track of more states, and so there was a greater complexity as well. And so there was a totally different feel between games designed for consoles and games designed for computers. Hisatsu Dojo Yaburi really feels like a game that was intended to be a computer game. It's an open world fighting game where the progress of the storyline and the world goes on whether you're dealing with it or not. It's incredibly ambitious, absolutely ingenious that they got this on the Famicom, and unfortunately it plays pretty poorly. I thought for sure that this would have originally been a PC-88 game, based on how ambitious the world design is and how clunky the action is. But no, as far as I can tell, it's a Famicom original. The concept of the game is that there are 12 warring dojos in a town. You're the leader of one of those, and you'll have to wander the area beating up students from the other dojos, eventually taking down the masters of each of them, while defending your own dojo from attack. And while you're doing this, the other 11 masters are also fighting each other. So it's very likely that in a game of Hisatsu Dojo Yaburi, that you'll have to defeat all of the other masters. They'll take each other out and grow stronger while you're working on it. When you start the game, you're given three choices of martial arts. Karate, Kenpo, and Tai Chi. In practice, the difference between these three is just a little bit of animation. I always liked the Tai Chi Master film series, so I started there. Next, you have to divide up 16 points between four stats. Health, Attack, Defense, and Skill. Skill's the only one that isn't immediately clear. When a blow connects in the action sequences, a skill check is performed to determine if it does damage. So if you have high skill, your attacks will land more often, and your opponents won't affect you as often. For that reason, I think skill and health are actually the most important stats. I wouldn't totally neglect attack and defense. They're just going to be less important. The way the game plays out is you walk around this side-scrolling area, and you can take paths into and out of the screen. While you're walking around, you'll be approached by other martial artists, and then you have to defeat them in a battle. Sometimes you're being attacked by an entire group, and you'll have to beat them all one at a time. There's no reviving or multiple rounds here. If you're knocked out, it's game over. The combat works just like a fighting game. You hit B to kick, A to punch, and you can jump by pressing up. As a general rule of thumb, I found jump kicks to be the most effective attack. But kicks in general had more reach, and so I wound up really relying on those. Until you build up your health and defense quite a bit, you'll only be able to take two or three hits before you're knocked out. After you've defeated an opponent, you can go to a dojo that you control, and then train there. Each dojo has their own style of martial arts, and so as you take over other dojos, your options will increase. Each dojo also has a rank, and here the lower the number the better. Your starting dojo is rank 4. And when you accumulate enough cash after beating martial artists, you can go to this shop, and pay to have the dojo associated with that shop rank up. The ranks affect how many points you get every time you go to that dojo to train. You only have to defeat one other enemy in order to level up and train again. And when you do this, you have the choice of training yourself, or training your pupils at the dojo. Whichever option you choose, you add points to their abilities. Your students have one additional stat, speed. You also have a speed stat, but yours automatically increases by one every time you train yourself. Training your pupils is what helps defend your dojo 
against attacks from other schools. There's one other type of store you need to be aware of, and that's this doctor who will heal all of your wounds, but you do have to pay him. You don't heal automatically after fights or after you train. So that makes the basic game loop. You leave your dojo, go find someone to fight. Then as soon as you defeat them, you turn around, go back to heal up, go to your dojo and train, save the game, since there are no continues, and then repeat that process. Defeated enemies can take quite a while to respawn, so as you do this, eventually you'll clear a path to the next dojo you want to take over. The key here is that if you fight two enemies in a row, you're essentially giving up a level. Progress is slow at the beginning because of this, but you really can't rush it because getting defeated means you have to start over. Sometimes while wandering around, this guy will run up to you with news about what's happening with the dojos. Here you can see who controls what, and check the current abilities of everyone. You can also view this information from a dojo that you control. In Japan, Hisatsu Dojo Yaburi is remembered as being ahead of its time, but also terminally flawed. Which is pretty much the conclusion I came to. The actual fighting is not very good, I don't think I ever landed a punch. And being forced into that cycle to build up your character enough where you can take things on slows the game down a lot. And yet, it's such an intriguing game with all of these schools of martial artists running around and fighting each other that I still kinda wanna play through the whole thing. Just once, and I'd never recommend it to anybody, but I feel like the experience would be worth it.